All right, Cherubs, right now we're looking at De Musel de Avignon by Pablo Picasso. Now, if you've ever studied this painting before, you've probably heard all about Picasso's process, his many sketches or carnets, how it went through a few changes and so on. But we're not gonna do that here. This painting isn't about the experience of being Pablo Picasso, it's about the experience of being alive in 1907. I'm gonna argue here that Picasso's painting taps into a cultural movement outside of the art world. The year 1907 appeared in an era of rapid change. The world was being connected through the railway system and telegraphs, there were experiments with flying machines, and the Model T Ford was only a year away. Photographs and moving pictures were new as well. The innovations were not only happening quickly, the innovations themselves allowed ideas to move more quickly. Never before had a culture been forced to deal with such rapid change and such rapid movement. This encouraged new ways of conceptualizing time. The concept of time zones was only about 50 years old in 1907, and the ability to travel fast enough that these time zones mattered was even younger. The increasingly widespread use of railroads and telegraphs made the concept of simultaneity important. Morning in the Prado, where this painting hangs, is evening in New York. That information had no practical value in 1800, but in 1900 it did. Now before we look at Picasso's painting again and discuss the impact of these technologies on the arts, we can quickly discuss their impact on the sciences. In 1905, two years before Picasso's painting debuts, was Einstein's miraculous year and saw the publication of four articles articulating the foundations of modern physics. Much of this work deals with the problem of simultaneity, with the speed of light being a universal constant rather than time or space. Time to return to the arts. Let's start with a basic description. This is an enormous painting, eight feet by seven feet and eight inches, of five women, who, if we know a little bit about the area of Avignon, are in a brothel. Moving from left to right, the figures become increasingly geometric with sharper features. Picasso has tapped into this conversation on simultaneity with an attempt to view these figures at many different angles and many different times all at once. The figure at the bottom right, here, is perhaps the best example of this. Her body is turned away from us, but her head, adorned with an African mask, is turned towards us. And these two central figures have part of their faces in profile and the rest looking directly at the viewer. And the figure all the way to the left, here, seems to have the right leg in motion, and we view that motion at seemingly different moments in time. Another intellectual movement at the time revolves around Viennese psychologist Sigmund Freud, who had begun to attract a following by 1907. Freud posited that we have an unconscious that affects our decisions. Now before this, the Age of Enlightenment had posited that we could fully understand our universe through our senses, that our observations could be enough. Freud's idea, however, held that there are reasons that we can never know, particularly through the senses. The mind is capable of absorbing information that the senses cannot recognize. Picasso wanted to tap into those inaccessible parts of our consciousness. His work is conceptual rather than figurative. He was very capable of painting five women realistically, but he chose to appeal to that part of humanity deeper than our senses through conceptual, geometric, and oddly proportioned figures. The feeling of uncertainty that accompanies these ideas, that time isn't universal, that we can't understand our own brains, that we can't trust our own senses, permeated culture in all sorts of ways in 1907, from Einstein and physics to Freud and the human sciences, to the recently published works of Friedrich Nietzsche in philosophy, or failure to prove the stability of the universe by Poincaré with the three-body problem in mathematics. Picasso represents the arts here, and visually represents these concepts and uncertainties. This is art at its best. It's bridging cultural experiences and capturing a particular time in human history visually in a way that only a large painting can. So this one was a remake of one of my first videos from back in 2012. If you think I should do more remakes with better production value of any of my other earlier videos, please let me know in the comments below. If you feel I've earned your subscription here, please consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.